Good morning. So we are starting the 42nd lecture. Still continuing MOS. <coughs> Before I switch over to other topics, let me discuss. I have discussed some bits of technology in a previous lecture. But I want to give you the typical cross section of a CMOS, which is modern type, okay? Because that will give you what CMOS is and what is the present scenario. <clears throat> so this is CMOS.
So, this is the <coughs> cross sectional diagram of an oxide isolated CMOS, which is more or less modern. If you carefully see, here the basic substrate is P type, which is quite thick, maybe around 300 to 400 micron thick. Whereas this rests on, there is an AP layer on the top, which is quite thin about it may be 2 micron or even 1 micron. This is 2 micron or even 1 micron, the epitaxial film. While the substrate is P plus, very heavily boron of substrate, the AP layer is not that heavily dropped. Typical concentration may be around 10 to the power 15 per centimeter cube, whereas here the concentration may be 10 to the power 20 per centimeter cube, quite heavily doped. Then on this epi layer, we have an n-type diffuse region. This is called n-well. This is of course an n-well CMOS technology or n-well CMOS inverter. Sometimes we have dwell well, that means N well, and there is a P well also, but it is not, this is very popular today. So, P plus substrate, a thin P type AP layer, then an N well in which we make the, we realize the P MOS. <coughs> Within the N well, by the kind of technology which I described earlier, we define a P, P MOS which may be LDD type, lightly doped drain type as discussed earlier with a polysilicon gate, <coughs> an ultra thin oxide sidewall spacer which I indicated earlier, oxide sidewall spacer. Then there may be titanium silicide and aluminum contact. So these contacts are self aligned, titanium silicide and aluminum contacts. This is for the PMOS, whereas on the other hand, on the entire AP layer, without any well, you can have your NMOSs made. NMOSs normally, they are all drivers. In CMOS technology, NMOSs are drivers and PMOS are loads. So, P PMOSs are pull-up transistors or load transistors, NMOSs are driver transistors in modern CMOS technology, say particularly in feature CMOS and similar kind of technology. The number of NMOS is much higher than that of PMOSs. Intentionally it is made so that the area occupied by the wells is minimized and you have a very high packing density, reduced power dissipation and other things. So here, the same way as I indicated here, we have the NMOS. Here also this NMOS usually is LDD type, a lightly doped drain type. There is a polysilicon gate, oxide sidewall spacers on either side. Then we have titanium silicide and aluminum contact. Titanium silicide is a barrier and aluminum is a top metallization. This is grounded source substrate, this is the main <coughs> substrate source substrate grounded and in this side, in this side you see it, you see that this end and the NOL is grounded. So, this side acts as the source of the PMOS, whereas this side acts as the source of the NMOS. These two are the drains, this is the drain of the NMOS, this is the drain of the PMOS which are combined and that gives you the output. The two gates are connected. Of course, there is a metallization which I have not shown here. So, this is only the cross section. On the chip, there is a metallization which interconnects the two gates and you apply your input here. Take the output from the common drains 
and that's how you get and you apply your supply voltage to the other side the source of the PMOS source N well shorted of the PMOS and this is the resulting CMOS inverter the question is why the P type epilier I have indicated that in, in CMOS there is one drawback one problem and that is what is known as latch up effect that is a typical problem of CMOS you have already started some <coughs> little bit not much but some some uh, something I have already covered on the thyristor or PNPN structure in an earlier class if you carefully examine the CMOS you will find there is a hidden or some kind of parasitic PNPN for example you start from the VDD here where a high voltage has been applied, positive voltage, then this P n, P n which is grounded, P n, P n, there is a parasitic thyristor. Okay? And you note that here I have applied the drain bias. So this junction is reverse biased and here I have grounded so this junction is forward biased or reverse biased forward biased whereas the middle junction this is also forward biased sorry this is forward biased this is forward biased but this <coughs> junction P N P N this junction is reverse biased there will be because the middle junction is reverse bias, a very little current will flow through this path. Through this path, very little current will flow. But accidentally, if the and at this small current, the alpha of this PNP transistor, PNP, and the alpha of the NPN transistor, NPN, the sum of the two may be less than one or the beta of this PNP transistor beta P, PNP beta and the beta of the NPN transistor NPN beta the product may be less than one so no question of latch up but when you apply a voltage because of transient sometimes this transient may last for a very short time but sometimes suddenly they could because of the voltage spike here the current in this circuitry in this path P N P N may exceed the value which makes alpha 1 plus alpha 2 1 <coughs> or beta 1 multiplied by beta 2 1 which is called the onset of latch up which I indicated earlier accidentally due to the voltage spike this P N P N path may have a current may conduct a current which can make the sum of current gains, common base current gains, alphas, or the product of common emitter current gains, betas, equal to 1 or exceeding 1. As soon as it becomes 1 or exceeds <coughs> 1, suddenly a latch up takes place. Latch up takes place and suddenly the voltage, <coughs> this path will go from the so called off state to the on state. This PN, PN path should go may go from the <coughs> off state normally off state to a normally on to an on state latch up state once it goes to the on state the voltage at this point suddenly falls to about a volt whereas it was 5 6 volt earlier suddenly this volt falls to 1 volt typically the holding voltage is around 1 volt this is called holding voltage of the SCR and that one volt will continue to appear between this and ground there may be a heavy drainage of current because if it is a constant voltage but if there is a series resistance anyway there may not be much drainage but suddenly the voltage at this point will drop from so called 5 volt VDD to about a volt and as a result the circuit will not function 
and this will continue till the power switch is on. Unless the power switch is turned off, the circuit will not work. The whole CMOS circuit, which you have fabricated with a lot of care, lot of design efforts, will not function at all because of this latch up. <coughs> so this latch up is a severe effect, severe bad thing about CMOS, which is which does not appear in the case of bipolar transistor or in the case of NMOS or PMOS, single channel inverters. This is a dual channel inverters, single channel inverters. Not dual channel, single channel inverter means single, either MOS fan, NMOS or PMOS. But here there are both PMOS and NMOS channels are there. P channel and NMOS channels are there. So in the case of CMOS, this is a severe problem. And this must be reduced or eliminated. Here, by using an AP layer, ordinarily when the PMOS technology came, CMOS technology, this AP layer was not there. The entire substrate was a P type substrate of concentration around 10 to the power 15 to 10 to the power 16. This is 10 to the power 15 I have written, it may be 10 to the power 16 also. <coughs> it depends on the threshold voltage and all those things, loss, leakage current and all those things. Okay? But then it was found if we use this, that kind of CMOS was called bulk CMOS technology. The entire substrate is a P type substrate. This was normally called a bulk CMOS technology. With the incorporation of the AP layer, it was called epitaxial CMOS technology. Then the substrate became P plus and usually it is grounded. Not only this side is grounded, but substrate, the whole substrate is grounded. It is on a ground plane. Then you see what is what happens. Because of the extra <coughs> thin, very thin AP layer, P type AP layer, when the current, the, this holes are injected, P, N, P, N. This <coughs> junction is forward bias, this junction is forward bias, this is reverse bias. When holes are injected, because of the forward bias, very little, very few. But these holes, mostly, they pass through the N well and just, uh, because just beco below the piece, uh, there is a P plus region, which is a very <coughs> heavily conducting region. It acts as a sink for the holes. The holes which are injected, instead of going towards this route, most of them will be sunk away, will be driven, will be collected by this P plus substrate, which is grounded. So as a result, the current flow, which was 100% lateral earlier, in the case of a P type substrate, that becomes mostly vertical current. And the only a very little frac fraction of that current can reach the ground through that N plus. As a result, what is going to happen? Yes, even if there is a voltage spike, the uh, because it is, unless the current reaches here, this alpha will rise, but this alpha cannot rise. So the sum of the two alphas will not easily achieve the value one, or the sum of the two beta product of the two betas will not easily achieve the value of 1, unity, because of this vertical sinking of holes. And that reduces the latch up to a great extent. <coughs> that was a starting point in the technology for reducing C, this latch up. This particular uh, method of using AP layer in CMOS technology is due to mainly for uh, reducing, I should not say totally eliminating. Total elimination is difficult in this, whatever way I have shown is difficult, but at least reducing the latch up probability. But then the modern CMOS wants almost full removal of the latch up. In some technology, what they are doing, before that, let me tell you these things which I have indicated, I think you remember this is nothing but they represent the field implantation. These, these dash, that is the negative ions, they indicate field implantations. Below this, there is ion implantation to adjust the threshold voltage of PMOS. <coughs> Usually for 5 volt technology, it is minus 1 volt. The threshold voltage of the PMOS is adjusted typically around minus <coughs> 1 volt for 5 volt technology. 
whereas here also there is a channel implantation before the polygate deposition and there the normally the threshold voltage is adjusted to plus 1 volt so this is minus 1 volt this is a, there are two channel implants which i have not shown here so the overall technology you see that there is complication in this sense that there is an additional ap layer which we have not earlier thought of ap layer is a difficult technology particularly thin ap layer secondly this thing do you know what they call these are called oxide isolated region these are very thick compared to this oxide isolated region and this is also normally called low cost or local oxidation of silicon and here you know there is a phenomenon called bard's beak because of the particular technique a beak appears here a beak appears here similarly bard's head appears here and these two are bad for CMOS or any MOS technology. Special techniques are there to reduce the beak and to reduce the head of the MOS, this oxide. So this is again another special technological step called oxide isolation process. Then you have the polysilicon gate formation. We have the oxide spacer fabrication, which I've indicated earlier. We have the silicide contact fabrication or self-align and ultimately we have a metallization around and etching it for interconnection. All these things taken together is a CMOS technology which I presented here and this helps us in reducing the latch up to a great extent. But for still further reduction of the edge, almost full elimination, what they do around the end well, initially they were having some guard rings, a very heavily doped N plus region. But today they use trenches. Normally it looks like this now. <coughs> the trench may penetrate through, but normally they are just up to the bottom of the epilier. This is nothing but a silicon trench. <coughs> Create a trench means a digs, trenches etched in silicon, okay, trenches etched in silicon around the end well. The bottom of the trench comes almost close to the top of the or the bottom of the AP layer, okay. The trench is normally created, these are called trenches. The trench is normally created by a technique called reactive ion etching. So it is done by RIE, another technological process which I have indicated earlier that in CMOS or the modern submicron process you cannot use any wet chemical etching because you cannot define <coughs> the lines. You need highly directional etching or anisotropic etching. For that we use reactive ion etching or plasma etching. So using certain technique, we produce almost vertical side walls of silicon as in the surrounding the inner. Then we dis do some little bit field implantation through them. That is also done. After fall making the trench, we do a field field implantation. Thereafter, you cover the trench. You grow oxide around the trench, thermal oxide as indicated here. <coughs> And after the thermal oxidation of the walls of the trench, you fill it up by undoped polysilicon. So this region is now filled up by undoped polysilicon, which is etched away. And on the top, again, you grow oxide, and you get a structure like this. <coughs> so what has happened, you see that the lateral path for the passage of holes is almost fully choked by the trench which is an insulated region so around the n plus well n wells we have a trench made in silicon trench is initially a goes through an ion implantation process for field implantation 
then a oxide oxidation as indicated train walls are oxidized by thermal oxidation then the trenches are filled up <coughs> by undoped polysilicon undoped polysilicon it is there is a technique you undoped polysilicon you fill it up and then do some uh, called planarization after the planarization whole thing again you grow the so called offside isolation as indicated here then this process called trench isolated CMOS is almost fully immune to latch up, is almost fully immune to latch up. Okay. Hmm? No, actually it is surround, it surrounds the well, in well. I have shown you the cross section because you have in mosses everywhere around on the chip. So from this point it always goes to another uh, such in plus through in plus to ground and that will you know create the same effect. So why can't any the in well simply touch or penetrate to the yeah, P plus substrate and then you have uh, the the there is you know there is a lot of work done on this. Um, sometimes nowadays they, you know that this is let me know because we are not going into the details of the whole thing. This comes to almost to the bottom. Some people have penetrated it, some people <coughs> have touched it. Then because of the, the if there is a depletion layer around it and that depletion layer unnecessarily puncturing through the PMOS, certain sometimes there is a problem because P plus region the breakdown voltage is low and high and so very low and all these problems starting. So it is better sometimes to, that is what has been bound. Normally the trenches terminate just near the bottom of this, these things. For details you can separately discuss with me. This is beyond the scope of this class. So instead of making the trenches, you could also touch, touch the P plus substrate. Yeah. No, no. The annual touch P plus substrate is totally, you know, that there with this breakdown voltage of the whole thing will fall. You know that the breakdown voltage depends on the doping on either side. So you have to get this, what is this, what should be the thickness of the AP layer is the critical, which I have not discussed. In fact, the AP layer thickness should not be too low and should not be too thick. If it is very thick, there is a lot of lateral current flow. If it is too low, the breakdown voltage of the annual is lowered, which is not permissible. And also annual, retrograde annual and many, many salient things are there in the technology which I think is beyond the scope of this class, which is dedicated to the device physics. Achha, then question is, why this so-called oxide isolation to reduce the, to improve the electrical isolation, isn't it? Initially, circuits were made only with junction isolation. But as gradually, we increase the frequency or the clock cycle, the clock speed, in the case of digital circuits. There are the requirement of better and better electrical isolation effective at higher and higher <coughs> frequencies or higher and higher clocking rates. Okay? And for that, what was necessary? To reduce the capacitance between the wells, between the structures. You know, electrical, the resistive leakage is usually very small because silicon is a relatively wide band gap semiconductor. And if you passivate the silicon, silicon properly, the leakage current through a reverse bias junction is very, very small. So the resistive leakage different between the different called resistive isolation, insulation, DC part of insulation is very, very high between the devices on the chip. But it is the AC part which is contributed by the junction capacitances. That becomes important at higher and higher frequencies. What I do to eliminate that? You know that, say, either in bipolar integrated circuit or MOS integrated circuit, between the junctions, there is a <coughs> reverse bias capacitance, okay? And this reverse bias capacitance, at low frequency, they, because the capacitance is very small, their reactance is so high, they can be ignored. They are practically open circuit. But at higher frequencies, 
given the small capacitance will produce a reasonable low reactance and that practically short circuits the devices. They will not function. So you will have to eliminate, you will have to practically eliminate this capacitive coupling. Initially what do we do? We just eliminate the sidewall component of capacitance. In fact, what happens when you diffuse an impurity either by initial ion implantation and drive-in diffusion or by predeposition diffusion and drive-in diffusion, <coughs> the concentration of the impurities near the surface is much higher than near the, at the bottom. And you remember the depletion layer weight is inverse in relation to the doping, inversely related to the doping. So the capacitance at the regions close to the surface will be of much higher value per unit area than the capacitance near the bottom. It's called sidewall component of capacitance. So in this particular junction or in this particular junction, the capacitance at the sidewalls is much more effective than the capacitance in the bottom regions. So if that sidewall capacitance can be, you know that sidewall component of the junction capacitance can be replaced or can be reduced by some other. What has been done here? You have totally eliminated silicon from the sidewall and come and covered it by oxide. Oxide is a very good insulator. That was why the sidewall cap component of capacitance around the junctions has been practically eliminated. Only there is a capacitance because of the structure. Between any two structures, there will be a capacitance. And that capacitance is extremely small. However, the sidewall component of capacitance, which becomes very <coughs> important in the sun, in very scaled down devices where the vertical features become comparable to the horizontal features vertical feature dimensions become comparable to the horizontal feature dimension. Therefore, the sidewall component of capacitance, if you can replace it or totally eliminate, as we have been able to do by oxide isolation, your speed can be improved drastically. And that's how, till today, people are using scaled down CMOS technology using oxide isolation to improve the clocking speed. Even the 500 megahertz, 600 megahertz, Pentium chips, which are already using, they use oxide isolated CMOS, but highly scaled down, very, very scaled down, about 0 0.1 to 0 0.14 micron, 0 0.18 micron L. But then, I think you have already seen in the newspaper that one gigabit, uh, one gigahertz clocking speed, the Pentium already in the market. And I do not know what they are doing, but people I have heard that people have started using a technology which is known as SOI, you have heard of. Let us see what it is. SOI, it is called silicon on insulator. Here there is an attempt to even the eliminate the bottom component of capacitance. Here, you eliminated the sidewall component, but the bottom capacitance still remains. But in this case, we try to eliminate both. So what is done? There are two methods. In one method, you have a silicon substrate, any silicon substrate, silicon P-type or N-type, you grow a thermal oxide on it, which thick, whose thickness about maybe 5,000 angstrom. So this is SiO2, thermally grown, <coughs> okay, on which or dope you, 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 you deposit a polysilicon <coughs> film, polysilicon film, which I'm not showing now. You deposit a polysilicon film by LPCBD or any other good technique at a low temperature. Then, with the help of a laser beam, you focus a laser beam, high power pointed laser beam, which melts the polysilicon locally, but does not melt <coughs> the oxide. Oxide is quad, its melting point is 1800 degree centigrade, whereas silicon has a melting point around 1400 degree centigrade. 
So you can adjust the power of the laser in such way that only the silicon local remains, but I neither the oxide nor the silicon below, because silicon below is far away. The heat will not go to that extent. It is a rapid thermal process. The silicon in the substrate is not remains unaffected. The oxide remains unaffected. But the polysilicon film which you have grown on it, that locally melts. But you sweep the laser beam like this. You brush it. And sometimes we do a 2D motion just like our oscilloscope, that either oscilloscope or the CRT, like this. So that as the molten phase moves like this, gradually the polycrystalline silicon is converted into crystalline silicon. <coughs> so your aim is to grow a crystalline silicon layer on the top. So what do you do? You deposit polysilicon film and then you do a process called laser beam <coughs> recrystallization. So initially you do a polysilicon deposition. Then you do laser beam recrystallization. Sorry. Laser beam recrystallization. R E C R O I S T A L L I S S A T I O N. Okay. So at the end, what you get now? On the top, you have a polysilicon film converted into crystalline silicon. Why, from why need from crystalline Because the mobility will be much high. In polysilicon, the electron and hole mobility is extremely small. And that is not good for making device. Whereas if you crystallize the silicon, its mobility becomes high. For electron, the mobility exceeds 1,000 centimeters, 1,000 centimeters square per volt second. For holes, it exceeds around 400 centimeters square per volt second. So reasonable values. Then do you know what you do? By photolithography, we define small, small polysilicon, crystalline silicon regions. <coughs> this is I am now drawing. These are all crystalline silicon. Initially, it was polysilicon. Now it is crystalline silicon, but divided into small, small blocks. Thickness may be around 3,000, 5,000 angstrom. Then each device is now realize your component. So here a PMOS, here an NMOS, and so on and so forth. Each individual small island, small, small block or island or tub, whatever you call it, you make your device into them, and <coughs> afterward, you interconnect them by a metallization. What you do? This is a polysilicon. Say here, you make your devices. N plus, N plus, P plus, P plus. It depends on you know, where you will be doing. Then, of course, what you do? Normally, you put a CVD silicon on the top. Remove the silicon. We planarize it. There is a technique. You planarize it. And thereafter, you interconnect the whole devices. Do you follow? So there is a fund. There is called planarization. This is all oxide, but this is now CVD oxide. <coughs> or sometimes PSG. PSG means phosphorosilicate glass. It has certain properties, which is that's why PSG is very, very deep. I know that they are called, it's known as the flow property, flow, glass flow property, and which makes PSG sometimes quite attractive, more attractive than normal silicon dioxide in many applications. Okay, and thereafter you connect the different components by a metallization. All these things, whatever you have shown here. All these steps, excepting there is no need of N well now. Is there any need of N well now? Only some of them has to be N type, some of them have to be P type. That you can do separately by masking. Okay? And then you have, there is no need of that trench isolation and all these things. Everything goes. Now you see that every device is now surrounding by a highly, very good insulator. 
a good oxide. And the capacity, there is no question of junction capacitance, only the capacitance due to the structure comes in, and that is very small. And the capacitance between these elements and silicon, which is soft and normally grounded, that also there is a MOS capacitance. That also comes in, but that can also be minimized. And by this process, what we have been able to achieve? You have been able to achieve almost full elimination of capacitive coupling between the components. And therefore, such devices, such circuits are capable of going to very, very high speed. So, what about the battery capacitor? So, Packaging, you know, packaging problem is. If you, the capacitor to be each and every device, still in the storage. You can put a CMOS, that is closely setting to CMOSes. Yeah, also you can make it very close. But what happens is, this is one device, this is the other devices. So you are increasing your stress on the interconnections as well as your devices. No, no, on this you can use all the everything, all multi-level metallization, whatever schemes normally use. In CMOS technology for interconnection, only one level of metallization does not help today. So multi-level metal, everything helps. Only thing is this technology is vastly established. This technology came 20 years ago, but stopped because of certain problems. Now Pentium and companies like Pentium, they are restoring back this technology. And I was told they are going for that multi-gigabit kind of um, uh, processors using the SOI technology. SOI had a version called SOS. Anyway, let us not go into the details of that. It's a technological issue. I thought that these things should be discussed in the class. Another technique came. Here, actually, we deposited polysilicon and then laser beam recrystallization. Do you know what will be the problem here? It is very difficult to achieve a very high mobility because the crystallization, making a perfect crystallization is very difficult. Unless there is a perfect crystallization, achieving a very high mobility is difficult. And unless you achieve a very high mobility, you may not be able to achieve very, very high speed. Therefore, another alternative technique came, and that is called buried implantation, buried oxide. Or buried nitride. But oxide is more easy. What is done here, you take just like that, the substrate may be P-type. Here also may be P-type, it depends, you know, that I'm not going to the details of that. P-type substrate. Then you have a very heavy oxygen implantation at a very heavy dose. Oxygen ions, O plus ions are implanted at an energy about 500 keV and those exceeding 10 to the power 18 per centimeter square. It's called very heavy dose, high energy implantation. Implantation sometimes is done, can be done at least even at giga, giga electron. <coughs> I, sorry, this is 500, in, sorry, not giga, you know, 1 MeV, million electron volt. Okay? Then what happens? The oxygen atoms, they are implanted and they become, have a distribution like this. As you remember, because very high energy means the peak will be quite deep and very high dose means the number of oxygen atoms here per unit volume is also very, very high. Because the dose is 10 to the power 18 is a tremendously high dose. <coughs> you have to have it very high dose, okay? Thereafter, you do some annealing. <coughs> you do some annealing, high temperature annealing, usually rapid thermal annealing, RTA. So you do first oxygen, oxygen implant and then rapid thermal annealing. Then ultimately it is found that you have a buried oxide here. This is silicon dioxide but buried in silicon. And because we have done a very good RTA, 
the crystalline silicon still remains as it is on the top with very little damages. It is a, of course they are very, you have to do it nicely. There are various techniques to recover damages. In that case, the film, the silicon film which remains on the top as normally gives you very high mobility, almost near the bulk mobility. So you have got a similar structure. You can now pattern the silicon and make individual components interconnect them. And that is the latest process. Of course, people prefer this one to this one. There is an advantage in it. It is, it, 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 this technology can be used for three-dimensional integrated circuits. Do you know how? You first make a layer of circuit. Uh, when it is over, you grow another polysilicon. You have another, another oxide and then a polysilicon. Recrystallize that polysilicon. You make another circuit layer. <coughs> you can repeat it. And only thing you have to have via holes to interconnect the different. This is what is known as three-dimensional integrated circuit. It is a very good concept came. But nowadays, till today, technology is not that much established. Therefore, 3D ICs are still remains only in the research stage. Maybe in future it will come. Next to SOI, which Pentium is now attempting for multi-gigabit processors, I'm sure they will aim towards 3D ICs. Okay. I don't think we have time, much time today. We can continue for some more time. Another five minutes we can continue? Okay. If we can continue for another five minutes, let us now switch over to another topic called CCD. Called charge coupled. <coughs> devices. <coughs> I have told you that, let me draw the structure.
okay this is what is called ccd charge coupled devices here you see there is an array of mos capacitors 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so many mos capacitors mos structure they are very closely <coughs> coupled the separation the gap between the mos electrodes the electrodes are very very small very small sub micron gaps which i have not shown here whereas the mos lengths may be several microns the lengths the gate length <coughs> the separation maybe should be sub microns 